everybody. Welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. And I'm Joey Evans. Today we're taking a look at a game called... To Glory! Yes, I shall oh. never tire of hearing Joey say that. I love it. Say it again. To Glory! We're going to show you how this game plays. This is from Vesuvius Media, who it is. Uh, is primarily known for um, the Catapult Castle game, the... Um, Catapult Feud, I yep. think. It's, it's yep. had a few different names where you launch cannonballs and, and ballistas and stuff at each other. This one is not that. This is a pirate ship game. Which, let's be honest, when you heard about this, you were like, this sounds fantastic. It's a pirate game where you get to launch cannonballs at each other. I mean, who does not want to do this? Yeah, yeah. Vesuvius has a, they have an MO. Yeah. And uh, we're keeping an eye on you. Let me show you how this uh -huh. one plays, <laughs> okay. and then we'll give you our thoughts. Say it again. To glory! Again. To glory! Again. <sighs> Here's to glory on the table. This is a pirate-themed pick-up-and-deliver game where players are controlling a pirate ship here and a pirate captain trying to navigate around and earn coins and treasure chests. Coins by shooting these cannonballs at the other players and hitting their ships or treasure, uh, treasure chests by picking up these treasure maps off of islands and then delivering them to the indicated uh, other island on the back side of the map here. So from island G, this player would have to deliver it to island E in order to earn a treasure chest, which is worth six coins at the end of the game. The game will end when a certain number of treasure chests have been gained by a player depending on player count. If you're playing two players, once a player hits four treasure chests, that'll end the game. If you're playing two players, uh, four players, it's two. If playing with three, then once a player has three treasure chests, keeping the game moving at a brisk pace. What does a turn look like? On a player's turn, they will take their captain off of the ship, because if you try to move it around, it will just fall off. But that's on purpose, because on a player's turn, they are allowed to spend five action points, and they are also allowed to shoot their cannons once. Uh, an action point can be spent to move straight forward, or can be spent to rotate, or it can be spent to explore an island and take one of the treasure maps. When exploring an island to get a treasure map, you might reveal a basic one where you have to just deliver it to that island, but you might also reveal a Jolly Roger, which means that you are cursed. You will lose your player's ability until you shoot someone with your cannon. They will become cursed, but you will get your little ability back. Let's say that that player sailed and moved again. They now want to use their action shot, their uh, ability to shoot their cannons. They'll load up the cannons into these little seesaw portion of their ship here, and they will try to fire upon another ship. Players will earn one coin if they hit another ship or the Kraken or the tower. They will earn two coins if, as in this situation, they're able to get a cannonball lodged into the ship and they'll earn three coins if they're able to launch the cannonballs and knock the captain off of the back of the ship there on their turn. That's one way to earn points, and then the other, as I said, is to deliver the maps. Now, the other ways that you can spend action points are to rotate this central tower, because you're allowed to shoot from the tower instead of the ship, if you would prefer, or to move and rotate and shoot from the Kraken. So that's basically the game. Pick up the maps, deliver them, and shoot some people while you're on the way. The book does here have these assembly instructions showing how to put everything together, and it has a pretty simple little uh, rule set here. In a newer printing of the game than we have, there is also going to be, on top of your captain with the little powers here that make them just a little bit unique, there will also be a action point tracker so that you can track how many of your five action points you have used, though that's not on this first edition printing of it. Once the end of the game has been triggered, you count up coins are worth one point, treasures are worth six, and whoever has the most coins is the winner. And you can see it does take a little bit of finagling and finesse, but all of the pieces do fit into the box constructed, so that is a good touch there. Again. Okay, I'm out. To glory! <laughs> All right, so this one here, Joey, uh, I guess first thing that we want to talk about, production. Um, yeah. What do you think of the production here? You got the all the cardboard ships, all the cardboard constructs and everything. It's fine. It works out well. I mean, it's just like, I think everything works. It, honestly, the whole thing is they don't, don't be very overly ambitious with shooting your cannonballs. They're not going to, because the first, I mean, the first time you move, you don't do the whole practice shots. You'll get somebody... 10 spaces away, you're like, yeah. So it's like, it does take some, but they do shoot. They do shoot. It takes, That's the thing. It takes a little more getting used to, 
Uh, especially if you have played like the catapult few games where you're just like, yeah, launch these suckers. Right, they launch the very table. easily. Yeah, yeah. This is not the case. No. Um, I think that you get used to them, and you can make some very in, like interesting shots actually, like from multiple spaces away. Yeah. And then you get used to that, and then you go for a shot where they're like right next to you. And you're like, hey, don't overshoot this. <laughs> oh, I know, and that's so funny. And that's now the one big thing about this is positioning the whole turning of the ship. I do like how that's very important for several reasons. Number one, the shot. You know, but then also position your captain that it's going to be harder to hit him yes. by just that turning, you know? Mm -hmm. And I like that because really turning, I, I always like it as a mechanic as far as like movement, but then you also are playing defense too. Right, yeah. I think that, so to, to speak to production, that little decisions like that where you have the captain standing on the poop deck, which yes. is what I learned is actually that term, that raised rear deck of a ship. I did not know that. That's the poop deck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Safe search on, I did a lot of research. Good, yes, okay. Uh, so yeah, your captain stands, so like you're saying, right, just little touches like that where you're like, oh, I'm gonna steer with my last action point so that right. you can't hit me so easily. Things like that, that I think are great. Um, so the ships look fantastic. They do. The, as a whole, the game looks great out there. It's a bit to assemble. Uh, we did it very cautiously, mm -hmm. uh, especially because you're not really sure how that like cannonball mechanism is supposed to, you know, when you're like going by the instructions, you're like, please work, please work. But once you get it, they do work. It's just a little bit stressful putting it together because it's all cardboard constructs. And you're always going to be afraid of breaking it too when you kind of like, and you don't want to just break the ship as you're hitting it. Yeah, but they can take it. They can. Yeah. It's it's good. It's it's good cardboard. Yeah, it's well good made. Way. It is. They look gorgeous on the table. Now, the shooting, launching stuff at each other is fun. They give you the tower in the middle, so nothing is ever on your turn like completely out of range. Like if you're here and the other person's over there, well, guess what? There's a Kraken in the middle of the table that's pretty close by. You're like, I'm still going to shoot you. That's what I like because some of these these the guys would be out of range. Do, it's a pickup and deliver. You know, you're moving around. But you're never out of range of everything. You yeah. know, you've got that tower that can shift. You've got that Kraken that can move. You've got so many options, and your options are focus on the pickup and deliver or just focus on just hitting them as they come by. Right. Yeah. I think you should pick up and deliver because they did a good job of making that worth a lot of points. Right. So that the game will end, because yes. this game could just be you know people going around in circles hitting each other, but the fact that uh, delivered treasure map is six points, it's big. Yes, and then also like the pickup deliver. Like, well, every game uh, pickup deliver have most of them have this where it's luck on what you draw. Yeah, you know you could be closer than something else. So that you will have some of that. I think the way that they are set up is it, it's not going to be incredibly lucky, but you might get multiple things that go to the same island or the same right. path. I think the pick up and deliver is the, the weakest part of this game, and it's not bad, if no. that makes sense. right? It's not bad pick up and deliver. It's just very straightforward. The game is uh, age on the box says 7+. plus. My kid could easily go to an island, look at it, it says, go to Island J. And she's like, got it. Right. She knows what to do. Yeah, and that's and I also like the fact that one of those is a curse. You know, you get mm. that curse and you lose your captain ability. And then you can kind of give that by shooting. I do like, first of all, the asymmetric abilities are not great. Not like game breaking, but it is cool how you get different movement or rotation points with different captains. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So, so it adds up. I, I think that it's a very, very simple system. Don't expect like a robust game with a cool dexterity element. Basically expect a fun dexterity game that has a working pick up and deliver element to it. And that's the thing. It's just a fun game. And there's more satisfaction than you want to admit when you actually knock someone's captain off. Oh my gosh. You know, you get that, he's on the back, and you're just like, boom, boom. And you're like, I'm going. Because you could go for the main meat of the boat, or you can say, you know what, I'm going for that captain. And it's just, it just, it feels good. It really does feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, score wise, how are you going to come down on this one? Coming in at a seven. You know, because it is exactly the way I wanted it to be. You know, it's just, it's fun. It's a pick and deliver. I think it's almost family weight and it's it's lighter. I, I really enjoy it. I yeah. think it's fun. So I'm coming in at a seven for this. It's recommended. You know exactly what it is going in. Don't expect some deep pick up and deliver game. You're shooting cannonballs at each other. Yeah, and so for me it's a seven point five because okay. I yeah it's very similarly I have fun with it I yep. enjoy it it doesn't overstay its welcome it does all of these things right it doesn't do anything exceptionally like amazing or mind blowing right and it doesn't need to nope. and that's okay so it's a great family game it's a great 
uh, goof around, have fun, mm -hmm. have some surprising moments. Sometimes on accident, you launch a cannonball, you knock someone else's captain over, and you say, as intended. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yes. And then you have the Kraken that's stalking people, and it's just, yeah, I You're love it. You're never Kraken lacking in this game. You're never, yeah. yeah. So there you go. 7.5 high scores, giving this one a seal of approval from us here at the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Joy Evans. And this is our review of... To Glory! One more time, with heart. To Glory! You have the seniority. You call me old? Yes. I'm just a freshman. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm a sophomore now. It's been a year, buddy. Has it really been a year? Yeah. A long year.